I remember sitting in the thing screaming and watching the car just go up in flames. That's something I wish I couldn't forget. Tonight, with Connecticut apparently on the brink of bringing tolls back to the state, a News 8 exclusive. We'll hear for the first time from a man whose life was blown apart in the wreck that brought the tolls down here 30 years ago. Hi, everybody. Glad you're with us tonight. I'm Darren Kramer. And I'm Ann Craig. Tonight, a News 8 investigator special report. Tomorrow morning, the governor's committee is going to meet for the very first time. They're going to try to come up with a plan to pay for Malloy's $100 billion transportation overhaul. And one of the things they are considering is bringing tolls back to the state of Connecticut. Uh, this state was outraged about tolls 30 years ago when a gruesome accident was enough to make the state give up the easy cash and take the toll booths down. Tonight, for the first time, we hear from one man whose life was torn apart that day. He wants to make sure that we don't forget. At least two of the cars involved in the accident were so charred that police couldn't locate the license plates. It was the gruesome wreck that shocked the state and changed Connecticut history. There was an explosion and we have uh, six people incinerated. January 19th, 1983. A semi truck full of potatoes barrels into a line of cars waiting to pay their toll at the Stratford toll booth. There was an explosion and huge fire. Seven women and children were killed, most burned beyond recognition. But there was one little survivor. Another toll collector was able to pull a small child out of one of the cars. I remember the guy pulling me out of the car. I remember him. I remember sitting in the toll, toll booth on the side of the highway, watching the car explode. I remember too much from that day <laughs> for a three-year-old child, I think. That little boy pulled from that burning car is now 36-year-old Mark Piscatelli. With him always, photos of the family he watched die that day. His big sister, 18-year-old Tammy, was driving, and his brother Joseph, who was six. Since that day, he has struggled with survivor's guilt and bouts of addiction, and he is watching the battle over tolls here in Connecticut. They don't care about if somebody else loses their life for them to get money, I believe. Like, it's, it, it doesn't affect them, so why should it? It doesn't matter, I think. In the days and weeks following the accident, there was an uproar in this state. Petitions were gathered to do away with tolls in Connecticut. Two years later, the toll booths were gone from I-95. You can't have a first-class transportation system unless you're willing to pay for it. Fast forward three decades. Governor Malloy has come out with a huge 30-year plan to rebuild the state's crumbling transportation infrastructure, but the question remains how to pay that giant bill. Over a 20 to 30-year period, you would make close to 25 to 30 billion dollars. State Representative Tony Guerrera is leading the charge to bring tolls back to Connecticut. He is pushing for what's called open road tolling with no toll booths, not even a cash lane. Right now, a handful of states are using some of them. Massachusetts plans to go all open road tolling by 2017. It's a total non booth system, electronic, that just has a steel bar that goes over the highway with transponders and lasers that shoot to the transponders. And without a transponder, it just takes a picture. And every state that I travel, our tri state area and beyond, there's always a cash lane. State Senator Tony Boucher is leading the fight against tolls. She calls tolls a huge unfair tax, and she says with open road tolling, collecting from drivers who don't have a transponder will eat away toll profits. Most states still have that cash lane, still have that stop, uh, and they, there is a toll with lanes in them that raise the whole issue of safety once again. Mark Piscatelli says that while time is fading, the state's horror over what happened to his family, he will never forget. He says maybe there is a better way. Just don't think about all about money. It's not all about money. It's about family. They're going to find ways to pay for the roads with or without the tolls. So maybe there's other ways they can find The governor says tolls alone will not pay for his huge transportation plan, but he says they could be part of the solution. That discussion officially starts tomorrow in Hartford. 
to see our complete interview with Mark Piscatelli or to see some of the old coverage from that crash back in 1983. We have it on our website tonight at WTNH.com. And if you have something you want the News 8 investigators to look into, just give them a call. Their tip line phone number is on your screen, 203-402-TIP-8.